Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I'm going to work on a shop project that's been sitting around here for a little bit. It's a reel that I picked up at a flea market. It's the uh, Shimano Torium. Uh, I'm not sure which one this is. Most of the stuff is worn off of it. But uh, it's an older, uh, older version of the Toriums. It's a high speed retrieve reel. It's got a 6.2 to 1. It's great uh, if you're jigging and uh, overall it's a nice reel. I bought this thing amazingly for $35 US and uh, the reason for it I guess is cosmetics. It seems to work okay. The fellow tells me that he, uh, he used it an awful lot and just uh, went out and got himself a new reel and I uh, just found that this one was sitting on the shelf and he would rather use this for uh, have somebody else use this rather than just take space. So a very reasonable sale seems to be in good condition and again when you want to evaluate whether you should purchase a reel used from a flea market from a person who may or may not have been the owner of that reel you want to check out a couple of things and start with cosmetics that obviously uh, the cosmetics were all scraped up here uh, lost the decaling paint so it tells you it's pretty, pretty much been fished and had a hard life but let's look mechanically then you want to make sure that uh, for the most part it's operational unless you know more about repairing these things you want to make sure that it's operational so check all the features and functions and you saw me turning earlier you want to check the drags make sure they're holding tight which they are you want to check the free spool to make sure that it free spools which it does if it has a clicker you want to put the clicker on and notice whether it's uh, uh, features and functions are working. Uh, that way you can save yourself the expense as you go in to overhaul the reel and possibly use it of uh, you know needing to replace a broken part that perhaps you didn't know when you fell in love with uh, your purchase or the purchase price and uh, you want to make sure that you can minimize the expense particularly if it's uh, something that you paid a lot more for. Now these reels typically retail around 150 to 200 dollars so the 35 dollars price paid is worth it for the cosmetic side of it it's not a collectible uh, you're not going to uh, put this on a shelf somewhere the whole intention here is to use it and that's my intention uh, to, to go use this reel so let's take it apart show you what it's made of show you how to service this reel and put it back in operation so just making sure now this one I just had to go grab a different screwdriver but this one is tight and if that one is any indication of the other ones that are going to come along with this then uh, I got my project cut out for me here because I may not be able to get the side plate screws out so I think this is going to have a theme here of um, probably not being serviced for the amount of use that the reel has had and I think that's the key so a lot of folks ask me what's the right amount of service and there really is no correct answer to that but my general um, advice to them is if you use the reel occasionally then once a year is fine if you go more than occasionally such as this is your daily driver then uh, you better do it more often and more often generally means at the start of the season and every month during the season if you're heavily fishing uh, for example, a commercial charter or the like, and uh, certainly uh, every uh, uh, every few weeks if you're taking a lot of salt, and, and there was an indication on this one that there was a lot of salt there. So we just took the cap screw off, and now we're going to pull that handle off. Now, if you have any uh, issues with the handle sometimes the easiest way to get the handle off is just back the star adjuster nut off as you're seeing here you don't have to wrench that off at all so there's a, uh, a little what I call rocket pin uh, underneath here you want to be careful about that that's the one that gives you that click when you're uh, backspacing your uh, your star drag so be careful as you take that off and um, let's see if we can find it without it shooting uh, I think we're still okay here. So just be careful. So some folks have actually told me do this in a plastic bag. That way you won't lose it. But here's the pin that I was referring to. Now it's sitting proud coming out of there. 
and that actually runs in a groove these uh, these little grooves up top here that makes the noise when it goes backwards so take that out this is spring loaded but take that out and put that into what I call my parts tray here and I noticed just as I'm taking that out that I have some parts left over from my uh, another reel that I just disassembled. I'll put that off to the side. And uh, make sure you don't lose that spring there. Uh, I have no reason to believe we're going to, but just in case. All right, so we've taken off the star adjuster. We pulled out that what I call the rocket pin. Next came a small washer and then two tension washers and then almost a paper thin type of washer behind that. So make sure that as you're working on these, that uh, you keep a note of the sequence that the pieces and parts came off in and when you go to reinstall then uh, you'll know and have the record so I encourage folks to go get the, um, the schematic I did not do it for this particular reel but I encourage you to go get that and if you get stuck even if you didn't do it on the front end of it uh, make sure that you go pull that uh, schematic um, to go get you back on track the other thing I suggest is that you take pictures along the way and that's kind of what we're doing here with the video so uh, if I lose the sequence perhaps you can go back to the video now these washers are not flat washers they are concave the setting came out with them going face to face which leaves a gap on the inside and that's for the sensitivity of the star drag adjuster so uh, you could put them face to face which would make them less sensitive and put them back to back to create the outer edge gap or you can put them face to face to create the inner gap and all of them gives you a variety of adjusters on that star adjuster uh, nut. Okay, so now let's get over to the side plate then where all the business is and uh, let's go underneath there. So when I had this screwdriver out I did take the opportunity to loosen the side screws here and I'm going to pull them at this point. Uh, a lot of folks ask me about the mechanical screwdriver for things like the side plate nuts and screws. And I tell them I don't recommend that at all. First of all, if they're stuck, like that uh, handle screw was, you have a high risk of ripping that screw out. Then you're really in trouble if you, if you ruin the slot in it. Uh, secondly, uh, you could break a head off, for example. And... Uh, it's just uh, something that um, you need to be cautious about if you use it because of the high torque in those. If, you, um, if you're okay with that, go ahead and do it. If you need to do it, fine. Uh, but I like to work with my hands and I like to make sure that uh, I damage as few pieces and parts as possible. So I'm going to take the extra minute or two and, uh, and do this by hand. So there you go. There's four side plate screws that hold this on. I'm thinking I may need to pull the two below here because of the, uh, the little back piece. It's just, yeah, I'm going to need to pull the two bottom ones. There's a backer piece on this to keep the water out of the extended gear. So uh, let's go ahead and pull those. And then notice that these two screws are smaller heads and smaller length of the screws. So when you go to reinstall, you know where that came from. And that should enable us to take this off now. I guess we're going to have to take the two in the center off as well. It's been a while since I've worked on a Torium. Okay, so there you go. Let's pull this one. And now this is the third length screw. Some folks like to line them up on their workbench. Uh, I don't. I tend to find out that if I do that, that uh, oftentimes I'll knock them somewhere and then go looking for them. So I like to put them all in a parts tray as opposed to lining them up in a sequence, trusting that the film and that the um, my memory is good. All right, so here we go. And you can see that huge piece of, uh, this is the last of the washers that came off the top. Uh, this uh, huge main gear here, which is going to drive the... Um, high leverage, uh, high ratio of this reel. So there's not much going on on the business side plate here. You do have a stud here, which goes into the line for the free spool release. You have your springs, your yoke, your spool gear. And I would say right now, just looking at this, the only thing that this probably needs on the business end 
is just some lubrication. I'm noticing that it's very dry on the, uh, the spool gear. And let's go ahead and see if we can't take the rest of this assembly off, clean it up a little bit. It's got an old time friction uh, anti reverse here. So why don't we go ahead and pull that while we're at it? These I am going to lay on the desk here just to, uh, because I intend to put these right back in. I just want to pull that click ratchet below there. And I want to make sure that uh, I reassemble. Okay, now we should be able to pull this. Here's your anti reverse. This is an old time kind of feature. And what I'm noticing here is that probably from all of the use, there's a lot of dirt and grease and grime. And also this tongue, well, we should be all right there. There's a fork in the tongue that holds the friction. You might just want to pinch those close together if you find out that they're separated and not being effective. And then we can just grab our click ratchet here, wipe that clean. Now, if you needed to, you could use a degreaser, like a WD-40 or something. But overall, this reel, I think, is more towards the dry side than it is the been greased side. So we don't need to do much there. Once that's back in place, just go put that friction ring back on. And we can go reinstall. And as you'll notice, this reinstall is a square that it sits on on the pinion shaft. Uh, just make sure that it stays that way. And you can actually test this now, and you can see that as as you roll, it springs out, and as you come back, it sets in place. Let's just grab those two springs off of here and get any dried grease off those posts. And we can go right back and put those on. And then we can just put the, the little guard back on for the anti-reverse shield. lining up the holes and we'll just reinstall that. So my guess is that this has been a heavily used reel. It has, uh, it's clean inside so I, I'm going to, to go out on a limb here and say it's been serviced. I don't know when that service was but I'm going to say that it has been serviced because there's not that much dried grease. If anything, it's probably just that the grease has evaporated um, more than anything. And that the, um, the little roughness that I was experiencing when I was turning the reel had to do with uh, lack of lubrication. So we're just going to go put this back on. We'll properly lubricate this. And then we'll move on to the other side. Okay, so we got that back on. We'll just give it a test to make sure I didn't over tighten anything or that I may have had it in the wrong directions or something. With the test, the anti reverse is, is catching on that. Again, no grease on that um, spool gear, so let's go ahead and uh, put some there. I'm going to use a pen, precision reel grease here. I just call it blue grease sometimes, but I'm um, just not going to load it over, but I am going to make sure that uh, we get. Get it on a few, a few of those teeth, as well as the yoke below that. And then let's go ahead, take these out, make sure that we're good here. And again, this is part of this is that you just don't know. Now these these washers are fine. There's some minor lubrication on the back. That's great. We're just going to go reset this. Just going to make sure that the, the plates are clean. Now, as I say, they're fine. These are a little bit stuck here, so you want to unstick them, otherwise the, the drags won't work properly. Okay, just ran out of battery. 
and all things. So as we were mentioning, these things got a little bit stuck. So when that happened, as I changed the battery here, I wanted to make sure that I got the, uh, the washer out of here and cleaned that surface. And that's what we're going to do right now, just cleaning up the surface, making sure that uh, there's nothing that's hanging on there that's causing these to stick together. So I just noticed there's a little dried grease or something on this one. We're going to just take a piece of steel wall, just going to clean it off. And that steel wall is 4-0 steel wall. It's not uh, not abrasive. And the same thing on this side looks like we have some, some dried grease there that probably caused the skip. So let's just go do that while we're at it. Okay. There's some tarnish on here, but it's not pitting and it's not uh, dried grease. So. Okay, so I'm going to put that first one back. And remember, when I bought this, I tested to make sure that the drags were operating, and, and they were. Here's the, uh, there's two fork pieces. Those go into the holes. Next one up, we want to do the same. And you can see how the dried grease has affected these. And that's, uh, that's really the cause here. And I'm guessing by nature, we're going to do this again. And take that, that one off the shim there because I believe by nature that first one and this is where if I had a, a schematic it would tell me more but I'm believing that the round one goes first I'm going to come in with the, the flat I'll put the second one on now we're going to put the one that's got the, the cuts on it and the reason I thought the flat one would be proper is that's got the square that sits on this one and this one, then we'll go to the top with the last one. And the top one is different. It's got the wider hole in it. And then we have the one that's the key. And you can see how, again, the, the dried grease in this case has had an effect on it or the oils. Okay, so now we're back on with that one. And essentially now we've put a little bit of lube on the top. We're just going to put a little bit of lube on a couple of corners northeast southwest works on the main gear and because that main gear is bigger than the smaller uh, spool gear as you crank around this grease does spread so you don't need to get it in all of the pieces and places you just do a quick turn on this just to make sure everything's turning which it is sands the drag let's go over to this side then just a drop of oil onto your eccentric gear make sure that it's working that's all you need there uh, your anti-reverse clutch with your push the bearing out, push the shield out so that we can get to it. We're going to go ahead and put some oil into that. And it's just a little bit of dried grease below the cover, so we'll go ahead and take care of that while we're at that as well. Now we can go ahead and reinstall. And again, this point on the eccentric clutch belongs in the point on the uh, in the hole here on the yoke, so you just kind of have to play around with that a little bit till you get it. And you'll know you get it when you can there we go, I believe I have it there. And then we're going to go back in and this sits into the indentation into the main gear and then the bearing goes on top of that. I'm just testing one more time to make sure that we have the functioning going on that which we are. Okay now I got a bearing there so we're going to put some oil on that bearing and now we're going to close this reel up. So I'm going to take the four big screws that I had on the side put that in first and foremost. And these uh, there's springs here holding that together, so you want to make sure you have a good grip on the side case as you're doing this. And I like the Torium. It's a, it's a solid Shimano product, uh, still around. I think that uh, for the most part, I got a good deal there. Uh, $35 doesn't buy you much today, but uh, in this case, I just found the right guy at the right time. Who knew what he, he knew what he had. Uh, it wasn't one of these things where maybe he was selling his dad's wheels or something and didn't have a clue. He knew what he had, but he knew that he had gotten its 
use out of it and he was perfectly satisfied with passing it along to me to uh, rebuild and to go put out there again. So I uh, appreciate that from his standpoint and uh, we worked the deal and I think that in the end we'll both be happy for that deal. Okay, here's your third screw. Just looking in my parts basket to make sure that I got the screws right. There will be a fourth one of these we'll do and then there will be uh, two smaller screws below. And two onto the, the yoke to hold those in. And we remember the difference there. The one has a bigger head on it than the other. And if you get confused or lost, go back to your pictures. Go take a look and make sure that uh, you have them in the right place. I, I didn't notice whether the diameter of the screw body itself was the same. My guess is that it is. So it's probably easy enough to confuse. But in this case, uh, we know that the larger head belongs on the, the upper portion of this holding down those springs on the yoke. Okay, just a couple more screws and then we'll be over to the other side. Just take care of business over there. And you'll learn the secret of this, what I call the rocket spring. Because if you don't pay attention, it certainly is going to rocket out on you and ruin your day. Okay, last one here. And then we have the two screws for below. And these again have the smaller heads on them. So you just want to be careful as you're doing this. Make sure you have them in the right spot. There's one and the other. In case I didn't mention it before, I do like to wear a protective glove on my hand. Uh, the idea there being that there's a lot of lubricants and contaminants and like, and you can see I picked up some of that on here already that I would prefer to leave out in the, uh, the reel and not on me. Alright, there's that little shield that came off first. And we have the two tension bar shoes go on. And I have them seated the, the way that it was. And that little paper thin washer went on top of that. And now we've got to seat this little guy, and that's always fun. So what you do is you take that little rocket stick, if you will, you insert it into the spring, and now there's two ways you can do this. You'll notice that there's a hole in the top, and you can compress this little rocket or arrow or whatever you want to call it. You can compress that down and hold that with a toothpick or, or a metal pick of some description like this. Hold it in place as you go to do that. Or you can take that last ring and you can work it to the point where you compress it down Trying to get the balance here without shooting it. We're going to depress this down, trying to hold it. And one of the problems I have with this is, of course, that uh, there you go. So if you hold it this way now, you've got that spring loaded, and that won't pop off until you take this and you wind it all the way down. And that should properly seat this. Here you go. That'll properly seat this. Push the washer down. And now we got the click. You can hear the click going. Which is the right way for this to operate. And you can actually see that it moved up into the, uh, the star drag at this point. Okay then. Tension washer. Handle. Nut cap. T 
tighten that nut cap down. Now you notice I just tightened down the drag. That gives you room between the handle and the, the star adjuster. And uh, sometimes folks forget to tighten this down. They go ahead and they tighten up the, the cap nut and then they can't move the star adjuster and that's because the star adjuster actually acted as a wedge and uh, prevented that from moving. So you have to line this up now to get that uh, hole in that to work properly. And I'm just going to hit this now. The screw had given me a little trouble coming out and I can see the salt on it so I'm just going to put a little bit of penetrating oil on the threads of that just to kind of take care of the the salt on the way back in. Okay, so that's the, the business side of this reel. So we're going to go over to the other side of the reel now. And we're just going to work on that for a moment just to make sure that the bearing on that side and the, uh, we heard the clicker mechanism is fine. We just want to make sure all the other pieces and parts are fine as well. Grab that same screwdriver we had before. And pull these out. These are also Phillips head and they're probably the same screw as on the other side of it. So we'll open this one up. Just again, because I don't know the history of this reel, it seems like the fellow was square with me in terms of telling me, you know, it's just been used a lot. I don't care about cosmetics and quite honestly the fish on the other end of the line just cares about getting loose and other, not whether your reel is all scraped up or not. It doesn't look like it's been abused, it looks like it's been used. In this case here's another screw that's full of that uh, salt so let's go ahead and uh, just let that rest while we take the side case off. This is the side case then, we got a bearing in here that we want to lubricate. I always like to test the bearings too, so I just put a screwdriver in and make sure everything's working fine with that. I'm going to use Relax, which is a, a synthetic oil, to uh, lube the bearing. Just uh, We heard that click, and I'm just observing the tongue here. The tongue is not worn in any regard. We can pull the spool out at this point, and uh, there's a spool bearing here, so you do want to make sure that you put some oil on that as well. We didn't get that bearing in the basic service. It's been a little bit just to make sure that it uh, is working fine and then we can uh, also put a light coating of grease now that we have this out we can use that blue grease again just put a light coating on there to make sure that the inside of that spool gear that this inserts into uh, has a little bit of grease to help it spin we can reinstall that we can reinstall the side plate now you can also put a little bit of grease just on the, the stud end here of the spool Then we can go ahead and re reinstall the, the side plate. And essentially this reel servicing itself is done. So I've uh, given you a little bit of a tutorial about this reel. I've given you a little bit of a discussion about buying a used reel at a flea market. Uh, shown you a little bit about the, uh, the reel itself. And uh, all we're doing is buttoning this reel up. And we'll give it a test drive. Apparently I don't have that lined up properly there. So one of the other things you should know is if you don't already have one, get a little pin. That's a centering pin. Like, there you go. They can help you get the screws lined up and a whole bunch of other things. I know those of you that have watched my videos a lot know that uh, I've used it on many occasions for a whole bunch of different uses and features and functions. That one's just an old uh, carpenter's scratch all and it actually has a little bit of significance to me. It was my father-in-law's. Uh, I don't know what he ever used it for, but uh, when we were cleaning up his workbench one day, it, uh, he said he doesn't use it. Uh, why don't I take it? And I did. And uh, it's been on my bench for quite some time since. And uh, it's served me very well over the course of time. Alrighty, so that's that. I do notice that there's... Um, room on the bottom here for a, uh, uh, a real tie, if you want, a rod tie. I don't know where that is. Uh, maybe a 
If you really wanted one, I don't intend to use one, but if you wanted one, I guess they're available probably either through Shimano or as part of the, uh, the overall... Uh, Lock this down. Make sure that we have plenty of drag. Nice tight drags. Move that into free spool. Oh, we got a nice, uh, nice free spool going there. Somebody asked me why I don't test the clicker, so we'll go back and uh, make sure that that clicker works. So there you go. That's the Shimano Torium. I think it says the 15. I could be wrong. Uh, it's hard to tell because it's worn off. But regardless, this reel is going to do me just fine. Uh, my intentions right now are striped bass and bluefish jigging, which require a high-speed retrieve. I think this is going to be a nice casting reel, too, because I like the way that that spool spins with the burrings. So we may even take it uh, and put it on a long pole and give it some casts and see how we do with that as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like it and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more of these, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.